nozzle check of the SRBs. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system armed. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis. A final visit to enhance the vision of Hubble into the deepest grandeur of our universe. Bypass across the board, scooter, no action. Houston now controlling Atlantis on its way. Atlantis on its way, all three engines now throttling down as the area begins as the vehicle passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Atlantis, Houston, no action on the MPS H2 out P. Houston, we copy, no action. Atlantis, go at throttle up. Houston, Atlantis copies, go at throttle up. Seven miles in altitude. Altitude 49,000 feet. <laughs> Flight control team discussing the minor transients that were seen at liftoff. All three engines are in good shape. The vehicle is uh, headed downrange. All three hydraulic systems in good shape, as are the fuel cells. Atlantis is 18 miles uh, and altitude, downrange 23 miles, already traveling 2,500 miles per hour, approaching staging the burnout of the twin solid rocket boosters, which have been burning fuel at a rate of about 11,000 pounds per second. Solid rocket boosters have done their job. Atlantis is uh, continuing in its due easterly course to catch up with the Hubble Space Telescope one last time. Altitude 35 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 51 miles. Altitude uh, 195,000 feet. Atlantis is traveling 3,300 miles per hour. Again, all three main engines are in good shape as are the uh, hydraulic systems, the auxiliary power units, and the fuel cells. No issues uh, heading to orbit. Atlantis, two engine Maroon. Houston, Atlantis copies, two engine Maroon. Three minutes into the flight, Atlantis. The P2 out P is a deucer only, and the ASA 1 is a power only. Copy, ASA 1 power only, and the H2 is deucer. Approaching four minutes into the flight. Altitude 310,000 feet, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Houston, we copy, negative return. And for Ray J, you can disregard MPS H2 out P on the left. Copy, uh, box, disregard MP MPS out P on the left. That call. Atlantis, press to ATO. Houston, Atlantis copies. Press to ATO. Those calls indicate that Atlantis can reach orbit on two engines should one fail. Again, all three are in good shape. The calls that you're hearing are related to a bad transducer only. The systems are in good shape.
Atlantis is 208 miles away from the Kennedy Space Center. The vehicle can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event that there is some systems problems. But again, uh, all the systems are in good shape, approaching five minutes into the flight. Atlantis again, if the, uh, to steal a cliche, a picture-perfect launch, that's STS, Space Transportation System 125. It is actually the 126th shuttle launch. They used to go by the STS number, they, they no longer do that. Uh, Atlantis is now bound, 11-day mission, seven-member crew commanded by Scott Altman. The pilot is Greg Jones. I want to bring in, I'm sorry, Greg Johnson. I want to bring back in Tom Jones. And Tom, as we watch this, and, and you hear the rumble, I know I've asked you this before, what's it feel like? Right now, the crew's riding a very smooth rocket. Those three liquid-fueled engines are uh, electric glide smooth. It's almost as if you're sitting in a room and your only cue that you're accelerating towards orbital speed trace is the fact that you're being squeezed back into your seat. Now they're at about twice the force of gravity. But the first two minutes are the really attention-getting ones because you're being rumbled and battered about by the turbulence from those solid rocket motors. There's about two and a half Gs of acceleration and you can hear the howl of those engines coming through the walls of the cabin and it sends a, uh, a, a spine-tingling sensation up the back and it's really an attention-getter. You know, we talked earlier about the, the fact that we are kind of in the twilight of, of the shuttle program. It began back in 1981. It's supposed to end in 2010, Tom, but we don't really have a way from 2010 and beyond to get our astronauts back up to the International Space Station without kind of thumbing a ride with, with the Russians. Do you believe that they'll extend the shuttle program? I don't think that we're going to see it extend much into 2011. If NASA has trouble meeting its launch schedule for those next eight or nine flights, they've been given permission and some funding to stretch it a little bit into 2011, but not much longer. And I think that's the right move. I think we should move on with diverting that shuttle funding into the development of its replacement, the Orion vehicle. And yes, we are going to face this gap but I think the Russians will prove to be reliable partners. This uh, mission, as you said, has somewhat of a risk to it. Uh, we've talked about that. Has a billion dollar price tag. Do you believe that this was worth the risk and the cost? Now, Juliet, I think that Hubble is so important uh, an element in our exploration of the universe, and it has been so successful, that we should do everything we can to maintain it and prolong its productive life. And that involves taking a measured risk here with the shuttle. If you think about it, we're going up with the shuttle Atlantis to where the Hubble has been for 19 years, and it's never been struck by a piece of debris. That gives you a sense of how small the odds are that we're going to be hit by something on this particular 11-day mission. And yet, I think NASA's done the proper preparations for the rescue flight if the worst happens. Yep. Tom Jones, thanks very much. And Tom, the preparations he's mentioning, by the way, on 39A, which you just saw, the Atlantis liftoff, on 39B, the next launch pad, for only the 19th time in NASA's history, Endeavour is there ready to go should there be some type of problem with Atlantis that does not appear to be the case. So far, things are going every bit as planned. Tom Jones, thanks very much.